Okay. In this video, we will talk about very simple three commands in, in Splunk, okay, called Iconify, Highlight and Range Map. Okay. So to start with, what I'll do first is we will start with the Iconify command, then we'll move to Highlight and then at last we will we'll talk about the Range Map command. So to, to start with, what we'll do is we will just go to our underscore internal index. Okay underscore internal now th this commands are I, I, don't, I don't see much use at the dashboard level M mainly this iconify and the, and the highlight command they mainly use I think if you if you if you deal with very huge volume of event right so t to, to see the pattern in your event maybe th this this commands are helpful okay now iconify command basically adds uh, icon to each and every event okay so if I if I just show you so the command is very simple the name is iconify okay and you can give a field name over here okay so let's say I, I'll, I'll give the field name called source okay so if I if I just run this particular command I'm running for last 24 hours. If you see it over here, Splunk adds this this new field called icon. Okay, and for each and every source, if if you see it over here, for the similar source, okay, it is adding the similar icon. For for if it is moving to some different source, it is adding the different icon over here. Now internally, what is happening? It creates a hash value for these events, okay, and then creates a underscore icon field internally, and then the Splunk web renders this one, okay, as a as a as a icon over here. Now how this will be helpful because this by by seeing this icon itself, you will know you are you have you are dealing with different source over here similarly you can you can apply this icon on any any field over here okay when you can pass more than one field as well so the icon will be created based on that field combination okay when the field combinations will for each and every unique field combination there will be a separate separate icon over here now when when now this thing we have to remember is like this this stuff this this iconify command only work with events okay you, you cannot apply this particular command on statistical tables right okay so that thing we have to remember and mainly in this in the splunk web this event viewer only this, this particular command works so if i if i just apply okay let, let's do it for last 15 minutes because it, it's going to take more time for last 24 hours okay so now as, as you have seen like different different source combination is just creating separate separate icon over there right so you can you can pass more more fields as well if i just write iconify source and source type so each and every source and source type combination now it will be it will be creating separate separate icons over here okay so it, it looks cool but only thing is that like it, it, it it's very limited in use and mainly when when you have m very lot of type lot of events you are dealing with maybe it will be helpful to identify the pattern some some pattern over there okay so so this is the this is the first command now the second command is highlight command okay now highlight command is used in similar purpose where again you are dealing with lot of events and you want to just see for a particular string is occurring in that event or not let's say i i want to i want to highlight if i just run this highlight on this particular this particular string let's say periodic health report okay so if i if i just run something like this highlight okay to be without caps lock so highlight this one okay now if i if i just run this particular command what we'll do is wherever wherever this periodic health is coming up right it will it will show up but now my events are changed so let me let me try to see if i can if i can 
show it to you using some other stuff let's say I want to search matrix over here let's say to, to make it simplistic I will in, in underscore internal index I will search the matrices only okay so if you see it I don't know whether it will be visible or not when uh, when the video will be created but if you see this this matrix word has been highlighted with this separate color over here right so this this type of stuff you can do even here also you can you can provide multiple strings and this is not case sensitive so you can you can give any mi mixed case over there okay and and splunk will automatically find those strings over there and it will automatically highlight over here okay suppose you want to find the events only with the error keyword okay so you can you can use this highlight command to see to see this events over here as well maybe when you, you want to see the pattern like when after how many events that error event is coming up right it will be easier to visualize in that case and again this is only works in this event viewer only you cannot do it at that at the table level over there okay so now the third command is is a is a useful command and i am including this in my video because this is somehow relate related because that is also gives you a flexibility to see some pattern in your event okay now the command name is range map okay the command name is range map now what range map do now basically the range map command only work on the field which are numeric in nature okay so that's that's the first thing we have to remember now when we deal with a numeric field value right and range map command works on the field values okay so when we deal with the numeric field values you can give some ranges let's say 20 to 30 1 to 30 something that those ranges and based on that ranges you can map them to some string or something okay so let, let, let me try to show it to you over here so for that what we'll do is we will work with this this is a numeric field right date underscore second which is automatically created by Splunk for each and every event okay it has good numeric values so let's say the first input of range map is the field input okay you have to give the field name so let's say date underscore second we will give a c c o n d okay so this is the first thing range map takes the field name now after that there are a lot of key value pairs you can define for the ranges different different ranges now these are user defined key value pairs attribute and their values okay now let's say i want to mark for date second values from 1 to 30 i'll wa i want to mark as green okay so if i just say green equals to this is how you give the range 1 to 30 okay now let's say for for 31 to 40 let's say i'll give blue okay so blue equals to let's say from 31 to 40 over here okay now now let's say i will give red for 41 to till till 90 okay let's say this this range i'll give now if none of these ranges are for a for a particular field value if none of these ranges are matching let's say i have not given any value for the zero right zero is not covered by any of these ranges over here you can give a default value as well okay let's say default is gray okay i, I just want to map it to this this number over here let let's say let's see how how the range map is doing now range map it creates a new field called range over here if you see it it created this ranges of values now if i just table it okay table let's say i'll just gives i'll just give this two field only date underscore second and then the 
range value okay so it will, it will, it, we will try to visualize it now now if you see according to our definition the attribute and its range value definition it is it is creating this this range value basically we are mapping a range to a particular value over here okay so the, for 30 to 30 for 1 to 30 it is creating green over here if you see for 31 to 40 it is blue something like that now this type of things you can also implement using a case statement as well okay but you have to write a more code compared to this one okay now this this type of use cases are important when let's say you you are calculating the memory usage or cpu usage okay of a particular system and you want to define the ranges over there right if it is very higher range you want to mark it as red now in this table maybe either you want that red keyword or you can you can create a custom table renderer to to render a particular icon over there as well right that the cross icon or tick icon over there right so when when i'll be discussing about the splunk wave framework i'll be discussing how to how to render those stuff as well at the table level okay so those type of things you can achieve as well using using this this range map range map output okay as i said the same thing can be implemented using eval and eval with with case statement as well okay but this is this is a good command to know and this command also work with the statistical table as well so if i if i just give this table data second over here okay date second over here and and run it the output will be the output will be similar over here because because the range map uh, works with the table level statistical table level data types as well or basically the data data as well okay so so this these are the very very three simplistic command uh, in in splunk now range map can be we can be we can use definitely use at the dashboard level but other, other two commands are mainly for our own purpose like when we deal with lot of events like we basically when, when we are analyzing some data coming to our splunk index right those type of commands will be helpful okay so hopefully this this is helpful see you in next video